Today we're going to install and get you up and running with the Anaconda distribution of Python and Jupyter Notebook. And then we're going to use a Jupyter Notebook to go over some examples for Python beginners. Hello and welcome. Hey guys, my name is Dave and I'm a full-time developer and teach university web courses. My goal is to help you learn how to build the web. So if you wanna see more of that, remember to click the little subscribe button right over there. Let's get started with Jupyter Notebook and some basic Python examples for beginners. Let's get started with Python and Jupyter Notebook. We will start by going to anaconda.com. From there, choose the products menu and choose individual edition. This will install both Python, the latest version, and Jupyter Notebooks for you, as well as many other useful libraries. So you wanna download and install the latest version and click download and it will give us a choice of Windows, Mac, or Linux. Pick the one that's right for your machine. And a quick note on the Frequently Asked Questions page, it says, should I add Anaconda to the Windows path if you're installing Windows? And they recommend that you do not add Anaconda to the Windows path. So when it gives you that option in the installer, do not do it. However, it says, should I add Anaconda to the Mac OS or Linux path? While they do not recommend adding Anaconda to the path manually during installation, you will be asked and they recommend yes that you do. So if you are on Mac OS or Linux, go ahead during the installation and add to the path. And on Windows during the installation, do not. Okay, assuming you now have Anaconda installed, and if you do not, stop the video right here and install it first. From here, I'm in the Windows Start menu or the search bar, and I could type Jupyter, and Jupyter Notebook will come up to start, but also I could type Anaconda, and there is an Anaconda prompt or PowerShell, that, or both here that are now installed for you. So go ahead and choose the Anaconda PowerShell prompt because I think we all know how to launch just by clicking on an icon. But now that we have the Anaconda PowerShell prompt, from here you can type Jupyter Notebook. Note on Mac and Linux, since you have added Anaconda to the path environment on your machines, you should also be able to type Jupyter Notebook. This will not work on Windows on a regular command prompt though. You need the Anaconda prompt or PowerShell prompt for this to work. So I'll press enter and it will launch Jupyter Notebook. And you can see Jupyter Notebook has now launched and it is running a local server. We're at localhost port 8888 and then slash tree. And you can see a file tree with folders on my computer. And from here we can do several things. So this is the opening screen of Jupyter Notebook. Over to the right, there is a drop menu for new. And the first thing we'll do is click terminal. And yes, we can run a terminal or a command line right inside the Jupyter Notebook now. And from here, let's see what version of Python we have installed. We can do that by typing Python, two dashes, and version, or you could type Python one dash and a capital V, which is what I'll do. It says I've got Python 3.8.5. Let's see what else Anaconda installed. And we can do that by typing pip, and then list. And we get a long list of results because Anaconda has a lot of useful libraries involved. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of them that I know I will be using later this semester in my own coursework. And that includes uh, NumPy, if I find it here. It's all alphabetical. So there's NumPy right here, version 1.19.2. Uh, also be using Pandas. I probably went right past that. There it is. Pandas 1.1.3, and also Scikit-learn should be down here under the S's, and SC Scikit-learn right there, 0.23.2, but lots and lots of libraries installed with the Anaconda distribution. Now let's just go ahead and close this browser tab. You can see it opened a new one, and we're back where we had started. Now let's go back to the new menu once again and choose folder. And now it doesn't look like anything happened, but alphabetically we can come down to untitled folder and there it is. Let's go ahead and cl click that checkbox next to it. And up at the top, there's rename, move or delete. So let's rename this 
and let's call this uh, my new JN for Jupyter Notebook folder. And we could put spaces in here if we want to. So let's say JN folder. If I rename that, now if we look here, it is alphabetical under my new JN folder. We can click that to go right into the folder. And then notice there are breadcrumbs here. So if we want to go back to the parent folder, we just click the folder icon or the root folder, or we can work within this, it says the notebook list is empty. This would be an ideal place to create a new Jupyter notebook. And we'll choose Python 3 under notebook. And we now have a blank notebook in Jupyter Notebook. Let's go ahead and title this, and we'll call this Python Starter. And we'll click Rename. And now that is the name of our notebook. Now that we have a notebook, let's quickly go back to the first tab. And notice up here, we were always looking at the Files tab in our original view. Let's go to the Running tab. And we have a terminal running that we had opened. So we could go ahead and shut that down. And then we have the new folder we created with our notebook running. Let's shut that down and see what happens. When we come back to the tab, look, we have this message. It says the kernel died, auto restart failed. It's possible that it can't be restarted, but let's go ahead and try. When we click the button, it seems to have worked. Let's go back to the other tab. And yes, we're once again running and we could shut it down, but I'm not going to. I just wanted you to see that if you get that message, no reason to worry. You should be able to restart your notebook just fine. Now that we have a new Jupyter Notebook, we can start putting things right in the notebook. And what is so great about Jupyter Notebook is it's a format we're used to. It's a web page. We can put HTML right in here. So let's start with an H1 and let's even add some CSS style here. So we'll say font size and well, if I could spell, say font size, three rem, and then we can say color, uh, what am I doing equals for? Color orange, there we go. Let's go ahead and remove that equals as well. That wouldn't make sense. Okay, then we can put Jupyter Notebook Tutorial, close out our H1, and notice we're right here. Instead of code, we'll choose Markdown, and we'll click Run, and we have our Jupyter Notebook Tutorial heading. Likewise, let's go ahead and just choose Markdown right away, or let's even choose Heading, and it starts us with a Markdown heading of one, and here we'll say Python for Beginners. And now we'll choose Run for that, and that heading looks good too. Let's go ahead and put in an image because you can put multimedia into a Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to paste this in so I get the address right. And there is an image that we're pulling in from pixum.photos and it should be 400 pixels by 400 pixels. Let's go ahead and choose Markdown once again and run. Hey, there's our computer image. So we can continue to add to this. So let's now do some Python. We'll start with one more uh, markdown first, and here, instead of even just saying heading, I can just make it a heading, but this is a little smaller than the Python for Beginners, and I'll say basic output, I'll choose run, and now we have something, we can actually type in Python here as well, so I'll just say print hello world, now Python doesn't have semicolons. I've got to get used to that. I've been doing so much JavaScript lately. There's our hello world. Now let's switch this once again to markdown. I'll give this another heading and I'll say insert a variable into a string. Whoops, I don't need to do the return. There we go. Now I can type some more Python here and I'm going to say person equals, and that's just how easy it is to do a variable in Python, what's your name? And after this line, I'll say message equals hello, comma, put a little placeholder for the variable, 
and an exclamation mark. And then I'll say format and I'll pass in the value of person. And then we'll print the message. And now let's go ahead and run that. It says, what's your name? I can enter in my name as Dave. And it says, hello, Dave, just like that. Okay, another markdown area. Here I'm going to say multi-line strings and string length. If I run, my heading looks good and I'm ready to type in some more Python. So here, this will be a multi-line string. Take a variable that's named story and I put three quotation marks. And notice it already gave me my three ending quotation marks. I can say once upon a time, then I can enter, go to the next line. There lived a bear family. And I can go to another line and say, who ate delicious? And instead of porridge, let's give them pizza. Okay, so we've got our multi-line string. And after that, I'm going to print the story then I also want to print the length of the story. And now we can just click this to run as well as the run up at the top. So let me just click this. And there is the output of the Python code and it is 65 characters. Let's go ahead and add another. And notice I just clicked the plus symbol to do that. We could also use a move these are all cells. We could move them up and down. We could go insert cell above or below, but just since I wanted one at the bottom, I click the plus symbol. Here, I wanna make this mark down once again. I'm going to make it a second level heading and type math operations. And now run that and we're ready for more Python code. I'll say X equals seven, Y equals four, z equals x times 3 divided by y and then I'll have m equals x times 3 and then I'll use the modulo y that will get the remainder and here's a comment in Python with the hashtag if I can spell there it is modulo it's also been referred to as modulus I've seen both returns the remainder. Now I'm going to print the value of Z, just Z, there we go, and then print the value of M as well. Let's go ahead and run that. And you can see the value of Z is 5.25, but the remainder of seven times three being 21 divided by four, well, that would go in there five times and with a remainder of one. Okay, one more basic Python operation to go ahead and add to our Jupyter Notebook today. Once again, markdown, and I'm going to type lists. And in Python, what we refer to as arrays in other languages is a good way to explain it, are lists. So run that and then Whoops, I've got one too many. Now I could go ahead and remove one of these. To remove a cell, you can go to the edit menu and here are lots of different operations and it says delete cells, but notice it also says DD. So if we press D twice, essentially, it will delete this cell. So that's what I'll do, once, twice, and it's gone. All right, we're ready to add a new list. Let's call this list friends. And then let's define our list, which if you're coming over from JavaScript, say this looks a lot like an array. Single quotes here. Got Phoebe, and then of course there's Rachel, Chandler, Joey, and Ross. Okay, after that line, once again, notice no semicolons to end the lines in Python. It's very clean and it relies on a lot of indents overall. We'll say friends, and then let's refer to the friend in the second position. And once again, arrays in Python, much like JavaScript and other languages, start at zero. So it should be zero, one, two, and we should get Rachel if we print the friend in the second position. And that's what we've got. This is really just the tip of the iceberg for Jupyter Notebooks. 
And there's so much you can do, but I really love the way it presents everything. And this is so good for teaching and an introductory because you can add notes and headings right along as you give coding examples. My first impressions of Jupyter Notebook is it's awesome. And I think it's got a lot of applications. We have just touched the surface today. I'm going to be learning more about it and sharing more about it with you. And I'll continue to share beginning examples for Python as well. And if you're just learning to program, check out one of the videos on my right to continue your journey. Thank you guys so much for your support. I appreciate you watching and subscribing and I'll see you next time.